بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يضله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and seek his aid and ask for his forgiveness and we seek refuge with what Allah from all evils of ourselves and our evil actions. Whomever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide him. And whomever Allah misguides, there is none who can guide him. And I bear witness, there is none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers who are present and the brothers and sisters who will be watching this video. And welcome to today's debate on the permissibility of the wasdul istighadah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Before I start, I'll give a brief introduction to who I am, just in case you're wondering who is this random brother, you know, chairing today's debates. My name is Dili Hussain. I'm the deputy editor of the British Muslim news website Five Pillars. I'm also a columnist for the Middle East Eye, a political blogger for the Huffington Post, a features writer for Al Jazeera, and a contributor to the Foreign Policy Journal. So just in case you're wondering, yes, I am a journalist. I agreed to chair this event upon request by the organizers to ensure that the rules and etiquettes of the debate is carried out properly, with the sole objective for the viewers to benefit based upon the cases and argumentations presented by both parties. I strongly discourage edited videos and sound bites to be uploaded in the aftermath of this debate, and I will speak out publicly if I see gross distortions and misrepresentations from either side. As an impartial chair, I will not make any comments about the performances of any party, and no one should expect me to support either side. People can make a judgment based on the arguments presented this evening in from the entirety of the debate. And brothers, I kindly ask that if you are going to be taking photos, that the brothers who have come on behalf of Sheikh Asrar have requested to not take photos, and if you do not want to take photos of yourselves from the other side, Let's make that clear. Let's respect each other's boundaries, inshallah. I also want to remind you guys that thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people will be watching this debate. And here we have two individuals who are very learned. And this is, uh, you know, visible from the amount of books that they have brought along with them. So please, for the sake of Allah and the betterment of this religion, can we please ensure that our adab and our akhlaq and our etiquette is in place for verily, if the Muslims who are not so educated and not so knowledgeable about the religion see men of books, men of scripture, behave in a way which is not befitting, then, in short, then this will definitely be lead, leading a very bad example. So without any further delay, I will introduce today's speakers. On my left, I have Sheikh Asrar Rashid. He teaches in numerous masajid in Birmingham and is well known for having taught numerous students he holds seminars on issues of kalam and eschatology, as well as lecturing on social and political issues. He has studied the sciences of dars e nizami, sarf, noho, mantik, munazzara, kalam, tafsir, hadith, fiqh, astronomy, rukya, inheritance, and prosody. Sheikh Asrar has gained ijazah from multiple scholars, most notably from Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi Maliki, Alama Rasul Bakhsh Saidi, Mufti Yar Muhammad, and Sheikh Muhammad Juma. He has studied in Madrasa Fezini Rasul in Birmingham, Damascus University, Fat al Slami, the Grand Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, and Masjid al Muhyiddin. On my right, I have Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, who decided himself that he did not want to give an extended biography. But he is the founder of Madrasatul Umiriya, an online institution which teaches students classical books. Those are our two debaters for this evening. They also have on either side of them, assistants, we have brother Rashid Khan on the side of Sheikh Asrar and we have brother Abu Taymiyyah on the side of um, Ustad Abdul Rahman. I will now go over the conditions of the debate and the conditions are basically the rules of today's debates. Each speaker has a copy of the contract and the conditions set out within them. They can use them to refer to these conditions if they feel that there's been a transgression on either side and I will then mediate if there is any issues. But inshallah, everything within this contract 
has been read over a number of times by both speakers. It's been signed by both parties. So I'm confident, inshallah, that there will be no transgression of these rules. So without any further delay, I will now invite Sheikh Asrar for his first 15 minutes on the definition of tawassul and istighata. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa aftulu salati wa tammu taslim ala ashraf al anbiya yusayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad. Tibbi al qulubi wa dawaiha wa nur al absari wa diyaiha. Wa afiyati al abdani wa shifaiha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina Muhammad. كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون. To start this debate, a quick glance for Abdul Rahman to contemplate is regarding question 24 or point 24. If a question structured with is is put to one's co-interlocutor, then it must be responded to with a swift yes or no. If the questioner then wishes to expand on why or how his answer is such, then he may do so in a brief and concise manner. Of course, this condition was accepted by myself after the party, the other party, pressed on the issue. But what we would have to reflect on is that questions are not always basit. Questions can be composed of tasawwur and tasdiq. But in Arabic, if a question comes with hamzatul istifham and with after hamzatul istifham, am comes, then the question is murakkab. And murakkab is answered with tasdiq. And tasdiq cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. If the question is with hal, then hal will be composed of tasdiq, uh, meaning the question would need tasdiq because the question itself is murakkab. Therefore, this is a false dichotomy, a fallacy in debate that uh, the interlocutor must reply only with yes or no. But nevertheless, I signed the so. In this particular case. The condition has been accepted by myself, but this onset of the debate, we can notice the mindset behind the opponent's way of thinking. The opponent has built usul principles, and those principles will be debated today. And the thamara, the fruit, is the belief, the aqidah which a person holds. Sometimes a question can be based on khiyal. When it's based on khiyal, the resultant, the, the answer of the khiyal must always be murakkab. Is this not the case? It must be murakkab. So when your, your waham or your khiyal, you have a question for me, your question could be based on waham and khiyal, and you expect uh, an answer which is basit, which is tasawur and not tasdiq. Therefore, this condition is flawed, but because of the obstinance of the opponent, we accepted this condition. But this is a fallacy. Adnan Rashid, you are familiar with fallacies when debating atheists. This is one of the fallacies of false dichotomy. Moving on to the definition of istighatha, which is what was requested uh, from me. I have with me Mufradatu Al Fadil Quran. Abu al-Allama al-Raghib al-Sfahani rahimahullah ta'ala. You have the book. You open the uh, book onto Ghawth. Abu Taymiyyah al-Jilani, you heard of al-Ghawth al-A'zam. Al-Ghawth al-A'zam, they use this term in Baghdad for a Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. And they use the word Ghawth. So we check the master, of course, this is related to the subject of istighatha. Uh, a Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, radiallahu anhu, is from your ancestors, is that not right? Abdul Qadir al-Jili. Al-Jili, uh, you're from al-Jili or al-Jilani? Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. 
Mm. A nod can do. Is that permissible? A nod. A nod is permissible. Ja is sharan. Al ghawthu yuqalu fi nusrati wal ghaythu fi al matari wa istaghathtuhu talabtu al ghawtha aw al ghaytha fa aghathani min al ghawthi wa ghathani min al ghaythi wa ghawathtu min al ghawthi qala ta'ala idh tastaghithuna rabbakum the meaning of if tas is idh Tastaghithuna rabbakum, meaning when you seek help from your Lord, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waqala fastaghathahu alladhi min shi'atihi ala alladhi min aduwihi. From Surah Al Qasas. This is in reference to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the Copt, and the, the Copt was hitting a person from Bani Israel and he sought help from Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And that is the subject of today, that in which clause, we have a clause here for the debate. The clause is clause number seven. The second debater will begin. I should have really been called the first debater because I begin. The second debater will begin by presenting his evidence in an attempt to prove that istighatha, meaning seeking help, of the Prophet is, is either fard, uh, obligation, wajib, essential, mustahab, desirable, mubah, which uh, you need to clarify. Do you mean the linguistical mubah of Zamakhshiri that you quoted in our discussion the other day, or do you mean the technical mubah, shar'an? Please clarify that point, right? Give him a pen, please, and write that point down. Okay. So, here going back to Mufradatu al Fadil Quran. I hope you brothers have patience today because we're going to go through this slowly and with patience. Waqawluhu ta'ala wa in yastagathu yugathu bima in kal muhli in Surah Al Kahf, which is regarding Ahlul Nar, people in Hellfire, seeking help. Seeking water, in fact, because the word is from al ghayth also. And when they seek water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the angels to give them water, which is like hot oil. فَإِنَّهُ يَصِحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنَ الْغَيْثِ So he states uh, that it's permissible to be from al ghayth also. But the, the meaning that we are looking at is from ghoth. وَكَذَا يُغَاثُ يَسِحُ فِيهِ الْمَعْنَيَانِ وَالْغَيْثُ الْمَطْرُ So the word al-ghayth can mean al-matr. فِي قَوْلِهِ كَمَّثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ سورة الحديد So he continues with uh, different uh, citations. But here, because that was related to al-Qur'an al-Kareem and the meaning of al-ghawth from al-Qur'an al-Kareem, the general meaning is Talabul ghawth, which is seeking assistance from someone. So we believe seeking assistance from Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is permissible, as is mentioned in that clause, and does not fall under shirk and kufr, polytheism and disbelief. If you open al nihayatu fi gharib al hadith wal athar, which I'm sure you brought, of Majduddin Al Jazari, Rahimullah. No, the uh, name is Jazari, Ibn Al Athir, not Athari. But you're not allowed to interject. But the, the name is Look Al Jazari on the title cover, and Ibn Al Athir, Rahimullah, from Mosul, from in Baghdad, which ISIS has taken over. So here, Ghothun. في حديث هاجر أم إسماعيل رضي الله عنها وعليه السلام فهل عندك غوات؟ so سيدتنا هاجر عليه السلام رضي الله عنها was running between Safa and Marwa this is this narration in Sahih al-Bukhari and when she was seeking water she said to Allah سبحانه وتعالى do you have any ghawat meaning someone who can help, meaning talabul istighatha. 
and who came down? Sayyiduna Jibreel Ali Salam and Sayyiduna Jibreel Ali Salam uh, uh, brought out with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the well of Zamzam. Famous incident, again the meaning linguistically from the Quran. So previously we mentioned verses from the Quran like فَاسْتَغَافَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ and here from Sahih al-Bukhari which mentions that the mother of Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salam said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَهَلْ عِنْدَكَ غَوَاف with فَتْحُ الْغَيْن فَتْحُ الْغَيْن so he states بِالْفَتْحِ كَالْغِيَافِ بِالْكَسْرِ with the kasra of the غَيْن مِنَ الْإِغَافَةِ what does الْإِغَافَةِ mean? الْإِعَانَةِ إِعَانَةِ وَقَدْ أَغَافَهُ يُغِيثُهُ وَقَدْ رُوِيَ بِالضَّمِّ وَالْكَسْرِ وَهُمَا أَكْثَرُ مَا يَجِيءُ فِي الْأَصْوَاتِ كَالنُّبَاحِ وَالنِّدَاءِ وَالْفَتْحُ فِيهِ فِيهَا شَاذٌ وَمِنْهُ الْحَدِيثُ أَلَّهُمَّ أَغِثْنَا So here the word أَغَافَ يُغِيثُ Where they say, Oh Allah, أَغِثْنَا Meaning, give us support. من الإغافة وَيُقَالُ فِيهِ غَافَهُ يَغِيثُهُ وَهُوَ قَلِيلٌ So the same uh, definitions are cited in other qawamis like uh, Al-Qamus Al-Muhid of Al-Fayruz Abadi and Lisan Al-Arab. I'll read the name of the author of Ibn Manzur, Rahimullah. Now, the clause states, the second debater will begin by presenting his evidences in an attempt to prove that istighatha, seeking help from the Prophet وسلم, is either fard, wajib, mustahab, and mubah. Of course, uh, the opponent will attempt to prove that it is shirk and kufr and bid'ah, which is disbelief, shirk, polytheism, and bid'ah, which takes the person who does this out of the fold of Islam. So starting with shirk, shirk billah, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My question to you, Abdul Rahman, is shirk muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? This is the very first question. Is shirk muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? This question must be answered in order to negate the fact that we say istighatha, seeking help from Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is mustahab, is a desirable action which has been recommended in Al-Qur'an al kareem from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and from Ijma' these are the three sources which we will discuss what you will attempt to negate is that seeking help from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is shirk and kufr, shirk and kufr in Quran, Al-Quran al kareem shirk and kufr in the sunnah, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and shirk and kufr by ijma', by consensus. So in all three sources, it must be proven to be disbelief, kufr, shirk billah, Anyone who does this is like an idol worship, worshipper and has opposed Tawheed Rububiyyah because you stated in our discussion that the polytheists in Makkah al Mukarramah they affirmed Tawheed Rububiyyah but they negated Tawheed Uluhiyyah and I said in our discussion that a discussion for those who are unfamiliar prior to the debate, which is also online, that anyone who negates Tawheed Uluhiyah will negate Tawheed Rububiyah, and anyone who negates Tawheed Rububiyah will negate Tawheed Uluhiyah. So you must define for me Tawheed Rububiyah from Al Quran Al Karim, from a Sunnah, from Ijma', from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from Ijma', they must not be anything from any one uh, other than these three sources that uh, the polytheists of Makkah and Mukarramah affirmed Tawheed Rububiyyah but negated Tawheed Uluhiyyah. Now, those two questions I will repeat again 
so you may write them down. Is shirk muhal shar'an or muhal aqlan? And the second question, you must demonstrate from Al Quran Al Kareem and from the Sunnah that istighatha bin Nabi alayhi salatu was salam is shirk billah, is kufr according to Quran Sunnah Ijma, and also that Tawheed Rububiyyah was accepted by the Mushrikeen in Makkah al Mukarramah. Now I'll give you a point to reflect on. That point to reflect on is if the Mushrikeen, polytheists in Makkah al Mukarramah, were qa'im, established with Tawheed Rububiyyah, then why would Al Quran Al Karim preach Tawheed Rububiyyah to them? Okay, Jazakumullah Khairan. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Lahu Alhamdul Hassan. والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد آخر الأنبياء في الدنيا عصرا وأجلهم يوم القيامة شأنا وذكرا صلى الله, صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن صار على نهجه وقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين ما بعد I'm amazed brothers I'm amazed with many things in my life, and today my amazement increased more. We were waiting for Asrar Rashid to give us evidence that was what it was written on the contract. That Asrar Rashid has to prove the permissibility of doing al istighatha bin Nabi to the Prophet. And what's amazing, he turned the table and he said to me, I have to prove that it's shirk billahi al al azim. It's amazement that he didn't do that. Just to remind you, the correct na- way of saying his name is Abdul Qadir al Jili. Ha- Imam al Dhabi mentions that in his Kitab Sir Allah min Nubala. Many people get it wrong. They do istighatha, they call on to Abdul Qadir al Jili. But in reality, his name is Abdul, Qa- Abdul Qadir al Jili, not Abdul Qadir al Jailani. Um, I'm, wa- I'm amazed why Asra Rashid has bought all of these books. That's the honest truth, Wallahi. I am. And I'm saying this from a knowledge based. It's not mocking and it's not belittling. It's from an angle of knowledge. Because as you all remember, our brother As- Asra Rashid has affirmed that he's an Ash'ari. Abdul, uh, uh, Asra Rashid, are you an Ash'ari? Yes. MashaAllah. That question was not a fallacy. It was a, is, are you? And he answered with a yes. The next question that he asks, I want it to be like that. Yes or no? You can see, you don't, fallacy, all of that are not needed to be used. So I'm amazed why Abdul uh, and Asrar Rashid has actually bought all of these books. Because according to the Asha'ira, the Kitab and the Sunnah is not a hujjah. The Quran and the Sunnah is not a proof. And I'm going to bring you guys the quotes of the sel- from the scholars of the Ash'ariya, saying that the Quran and the Sunnah are not a proof. Asrar Rashid has one of two choices here, inshallah, in this discussion and this dialogue, inshallah ta'ala. He has to prove to us that he's not an Ash'ari and denounce the Ash'ariya and then he can open the Quran and the Sunnah and discuss it with me. The second is that he says, no, I stick by my imams, my scholars from the Ash'ariya and the Quran and the Sunnah are not a proof. Then all of these books have to be taken back to where it was brought from. I'm going to bring you guys the statements of Fakhruddin al-Razi who put the stones for Ash'ariya, who put it down for them. And Ash'ariya stands, the backbone of Ash'ariya is Fakhruddin al-Razi Al-Bayjuri, Ibrahim Al-Laqani, and the likes of them. Listen to what he said, Fakhruddin Al-Razi, in his kitab, Asas Al-Taqdis. He says, Tilka al-dala'il al-naqliyah, these textual evidences, alati tamasaktum bih, in which you have hold, held, um, tamasaktum biha, in which you guys have held on to, laysat qat'iyat, they don't show certainty. The kitab and the sunnah, they don't show certainty. They're not a proof. According to who? Fakhruddin Al-Razi. Sayfuddin al amidi who's another Ash'ari. And I'm, Asrar, you, you look up to Sayfuddin al amidi correct? Yes. You look up to Fakhruddin al-Razi? Yes. MashaAllah. These are the statements of Sayfuddin al amidi and Fakhruddin al-Razi. Sayfuddin al amidi said, وَبِلْ جُمْلَةِ In conclusion, فَطَرِيقَةُ الْإِسْتِدْلَالِ To use evidences فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ إِنْ عَقِيدَةِ بِالنُصُوصِ الْمَذْكُورَةِ Using the Quran and the Sunnah as evidence, لا يخرج عن الظن والتخمين. It doesn't leave doubt and speculation. That's all the Quran and Sunnah shows. وهو غير مكتفى and it is not enough to use it in what? في اليقينيات. 
Asa Rashid, I'm going to ask you a question. Is this topic that we're speaking about, is it Aqeedah? Yes. Istirathah. Do you take single narrations in Aqeedah? Yes. You take single narration in Aqeedah? Are you an Ash'ari? Yes. Okay. Ash'ari do not take it. You either exit Ash'ari and you walk away from it, because the Sha'ir's backbone is that they don't take single narrations in Aqeedah. Because you know why? All the hadiths that he's going to bring on Istigatha, all of them are single narrations. There's no mutawatir. They are all single narration. So Asra Rashid, he says he takes single narration. Anyone who knows the, the Aqeedah of the Asha'ir will know that the Asha'ir stand on, stand on not taking single narration. They take multitude narration. That's one point, inshallah ta'ala. I'll, I'll leave that there. I'm now going to define... Because I don't want my time to finish without defining. Can you give me the nihaya, inshallah ta'ala? An nihaya. I want you guys to pay attention to this point because this point is very, very important. Give me the uh, mufradat by Al Raghib al Asbahani, rahimahullah. You can say it as Al Asbahani with a ba, or you can say Al Asfahani. Both of them are correct. With a fa or a? A ba. Both of them are correct. Brothers, listen to what Asra Rashid did when he was defining it. You guys are going to go back to it. I was paying attention. I was paying, and I was making sure I had everything he said. Al Ghawthu yuqalu fi nusrati. The word istigatha is when the person requires victory. When does a person require victory, brothers? When they're in a time of hardship. At least a kadalik? Isn't that the case? So when we speak about istigatha, we're talking about calling on to the Prophet at the time of what? Sallallahu alayhi wa At what time? The time of? The time that the person is going through hardship. Then he said, وَالْغَيْثُ فِي الْمَطَرِ And then he went on to say, in, until he brought the statement of who? إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ Now I want you guys to pay attention to this. This is very important. Because Asra she did not define wasila, which I will do, and that goes against one of the, con- the articles of the contract. He did not define wasila. And he did not tell us what the difference were. You see, istighatha, my brothers, and sisters who are going to be watching inshallah ta'ala is you are calling on to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you at times of what? Hardship. You are calling on to other than Allah out of hardship. Wasila doesn't mean you're calling on to this individual. You're calling on to Allah but this individual that you're, you're wanting to get from this person's reputation or this person's makana position something from Allah. The one you're in wasila, who do you want something from? Allah. Istighatha, who do you want it from? The person and the thing that you're asking. Istighatha is permissible when three things are present. Istighatha is permissible when three. Let me bring you guys the definition of al-wasila. So you know that wasila is not the person you're asking. I remember Salaf. Sahaba tabi'in and tabi'u tabi'in. This is the statement of Qatadat ibn al-Da'amat al-Sudusi rahimahullah. Who's the student of? Abdullah ibn Abbas and others. When he came to the ayah, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَ He said, تَقَرَّبُوا إِلَيْهِ Get closer to Allah بِطَاعَتِهِ In his obedience. هَيَ وَالْعَمْرُ بِمَا يُرْضِيهِ And come with that which pleases him. This is the قول. Listen, it's not only Qatada. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Zayd, Suddi, Mujahid ibn Jabrin, and Qatada ibn Da'amat al-Sudusi, all five, five of them. Wasila means what? Get closer to Allah with what? Your actions. Not, not a person. Get closer to Allah with your actions. And you know what's amazing, brothers? And that fascinates me. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. To go and ask the Prophet is something. And you haven't come with efforts and hard work. Not logically. And nor does it stand in terms of in the textual evidences. And that's going to come inshallah ta'ala soon. So now we've learned the difference between what? We've learned the difference between al-istighatha and al-tawassul. Istighatha means that you're asking other than Allah. Tawassul means you're asking Allah, but you want to get from Allah what? You want to get something from Allah. So we're not talking about al-wasila then. For us, the debate is not even about al-wasila. Our debate is purely about al-istighatha. It's about what? Al-istighatha. Is that can you call on to other than who? Can you call on to? Other than Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Now I want brothers, inshallah ta'ala, who are listening to pay attention to this. And I want you guys to understand this point because it's very vital. Istighatha is permissible as Al-Raghib al-Asbahani, Ibn Manzur, and uh, Al-Jawhari, all of them they brought. 
If three things are found, you are allowed to do istirath of that. Right? Don't say, don't bring me fastaratha ulladhi min shi'ati ala ladhi min aduhi fa wa kaza wa musa fa qada alayhi. That's not a, a proof against me. If a person is alive, you can do istirath on them and they are present with you and they are able to do that thing for you, it's permissible. Hayyun hadhrun bima yaqdiru alayhi. Brother, give me a cup of water. That's hay. Hadhr bima yaqdiru alayhi. No, I'm just, it was an example. Hayyun hadhrun bima yaqdiru alayhi is what? Can I ask that brother for, did I not, I'm about to die. I'm in a times of hardship. I'm going to die if I don't drink a water. And let's say, I can give me a water. And he gives it to me, is it permissible? Yes. Why? Yes, because he's alive, number one. Is he with me? Two. Number two, he's with me. Number two, he's what? He's with me. And number three, he's what? He's able to pour me a cup of water. Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's not with us. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, Inna ka mayyutun Muhammad, you are dead. Wa inna hum mayyutun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are dead and they are going to die. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala affirmed that, that this, that he's going to die, alayhi salatu salam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead, the fact that he's dead, that doesn't mean his status has gone down. Wallah, he's up there. He's a messenger sent from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the best man who ever walked on this earth. My time is about to finish. I'm just going to remind you another thing, brothers. As-Sala Rashid, Barakallahu Feek. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, inshallah, guide me and yourself to the, to the straight path. Can you please def- bring for us the ruling, the permissibility of al-istighatha? Ashla, I'm going to bring you, guys, I bring you evidence to say that it's not permissible. That wasn't our contract. The contract was, he has to bring us an evidence to say that you can call on to the dead, specifically the Prophet, after he went into his grave. Alayhi salatu wasalam. If you don't, then you haven't given us an answer pertaining to that issue. How long do I have left? No, how, how long do I have left? I've got three minutes left. Asra said that the kuffar of Quraysh, the issue of the Tawheed al rububiyyah and Tawheed Allah tabarak wa ta'ala affirmed for kuffar of Quraysh Iman. And he negated and he, and, he placed, and he mentioned shirk for them as well, both of them at the same time. Qala ta'ala, Allah says, وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ Mushrikun. The majority of them do not believe you from the Arab pagans except they have shirk with them. Allah affirmed Iman for them and He affirmed for them what? What's the Iman that was affirmed for them? Iman Rububiyya. Rububiyya. And the shirk that's been affirmed for them here is what? Aluhiyya. Uluhiyya. He said, What is Uluhiyya and what's Rububiyya? Uluhiyya is Af'alullah, Allah's actions. Rububiyya is your actions. Kufar of Rububiyya, sorry, is Allah's actions. Uluhiyya is your actions, your actions. Kufar of Quraysh, Allah says to them, Man khalaqa samawati wal ard. Who created the heavens and the, and the earth? Wa man yukhriju al hayya min al mayyit. Who's the one who brings the dead out of the grave? Wa man yudabbiru al amr. Who is the one who controls all the affairs? Fasayakulun Allah. They say Allah. That's Tuhid Rububiyya. They affirm that. Allah is the one who controls our affairs. Allah is the one who gave us life. Allah. Then Allah said to them, Afala ta taqun. Do you guys not have piety in you? Do you not have taqwa in you? But do you know what they did? They knew Allah was the creator. They knew that Allah was a sustainer. They knew that Allah was a provider. But when it came to worshipping Him alone, that's what they refused. Well, that's what they didn't want to do. Now, Asrar asked the question, why does Allah wa ta'ala affirm Tawheed al-Rububiyyah if already Quraysh already ex- accepted it? And if that's what they was with them? This is called finding common grounds. It's called finding common grounds. If you've affirmed this, and this is there, then muhal, it is impossible that you can't come with Tawheed al You're saying Allah created me alone. Then okay, why are you worshipping these idols for then? This is fine. وَلِذَلِكَ read Surah At-Tur. أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ And then after that, what did he say? أَمْ لَهُمْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ Allah was trying to say, did who created you other than Allah? Because they were affirming that and they say yes. Yes, 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 yes. And then when it comes to Uluhiyya, Am lahum ilahun ghayrullah. Do you have an ilah other than Allah? They're going to say. Last point. This happened by the Prophet. Qul ta'ala kam kufar of Quraysh. Ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum. Come to a terms that we both agree on, which is tawheed al-rububiyyah. So I can convince you with tawheed al-uluhiyyah. Why would the Prophet say come to something we have common grounds on? I hope I've answered the questions that he's put forward. Asrar, please answer the question by telling us, where is the ruling? Brothers, first time I'm going to re- remind him, and I'm going to keep reminding him, where is the, what's the ruling that you can call onto the Prophet 
in his grave after after he died. Evidence we need from it. Whether it's wajib, mubah, mustahab. He won't bring makruh because he doesn't believe it's makruh. He won't bring it's haram because we wouldn't have this debate if it was haram. And so those three can only bring wajib, mubah, and what? And uh, mandub. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahabu wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Your last sentence you said we won't be having this debate if this was haram. If this issue was just haram and you believe this issue is shirk and kufr, polytheism and disbelief, that in effect would mean you would accept someone declaring something which is mujma alayh, agreed upon, which is upon which there is consensus as being simply as haram. If someone calls disbelief Haram and not kufr. Is he a kafir for doing so? Yes or no? If someone declares disbelief as just being haram and not kufr, does he become a kafir? No. If he does this sarahatan. Say that one more time. Repeat the question. I didn't hear the question properly. If someone declares disbelief as not being kufr but just haram, does he become a kafir? For give, give example. Does he become a kafir? Give me the if someone says, uh, if someone states that to believe in a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not kufr, just haram. By saying so, does he become a kafir? Every kufr is haram. Every kufr is haram. No. But when you said if we believed it was haram, we would not be having this debate. Just haram or kufr as well? When I was telling you, I meant haram without kufr. Without kufr, yes. exactly. So now you've de gone lower to declaring it not uh, be it being acceptable to declaring it haram is it acceptable if someone says tawassul or istighatha bin nabi ali salatu is just is just haram is just haram and says it is not kufr is this acceptable yes or no you don't understand the question the question i'll repeat for the third time is According to you, istighatha with the Prophet وسلم, is kufr and shirk. After his death. Yes, kufr and shirk after his, after his death. But here on the clause, you haven't placed that. Moderator, please look at clause number seven. The second debater will begin by presenting his evidences in an attempt to prove that istighatha of the Prophet وسلم, is the fard uh, wajib, mustahab and mubah. And then, eight, the first debater will respond by rejecting the evidence is brought forth by the second. The microphone will then return back to the second. There's no clause of death. You and I both agreed that this debate was going to be after the prophet's death. Wait, you're not allowed to talk. I'm pointing this out. You can answer in your own time. What I'm saying to you, I'll repeat again. If istighatha is kufr akbar, istighatha through Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Un unrestrictedly, unrestrictedly, as is in the clause, and after he's passed away, with restriction, if it is kufr akbar, like worshipping an idol, and someone says it is not kufr, it is just haram, is he a kafir for saying so? Yes or no? I'll repeat again. Look, I'll simplify. You guys understand the question? You don't... Uh, you don't understand the question. If so, there's a. Did he do outside the question? I'm trying to. Okay. If there's an idol worshipper <laughs> and someone says. Ikhwan, please. I'll simplify it for you. Someone worships an idol. Is he a kafir? Yes. Someone, a Muslim, comes along and says it's not kufr, it's just haram. Does he become a kafir for saying that? I don't want an answer from them. They cannot. And why are you breaking the conditions? Uh, Ustad Abdul Rahman also asked the audience. I'm not expecting uh, uh, answers. It's. Uh, I don't know why that. I think you should take that brother out the room. He's got the no. Warning. He's got one warning. Just, just as speakers, you do not resort to answer, asking the audience members question. Both of you, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Come on, come on, man. Let's continue, please. Hmm? Just stop it. Yeah. 
Ustaz Abdul Rahman, if there is an idol worshipper, he worships an idol. A Muslim comes along and says, it is not shirk, it is not kufr, it is only haram. That Muslim, does he commit kufr by saying so? So that Muslim who says it is just haram, but not kufr. What do you mean by haram? Not kufr. So he believes not kufr. Yeah. Then he's, he's, he's wrong in saying so, yeah. Is he a kafir for saying so? Hukum'am, general ruling or him specifically? That person, give me hukum'am. Is he kafir? The action, it's action, yes. The person is, commits kufr for doing so. No, I'm not talking about the person, I said the action. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to press the question too much. That's not my style. I only repeated myself so you can understand the question. Um, going back to you said, what is the need for a person to seek help or istighatha from Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What except by following him, the hadith and the day of judgment, as shafa'atul kubra, the major intercession, what did Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Shafa'ati li ahlil kaba'iri min ummati. My intercession is for the people of major sins from my nation. Meaning, the sinners will go to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a shafa'atul kubra. They will do istighafa, seek help, meaning intercession that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like the man that asked Sayyiduna Musa alayhi wa sallam, but now, after this, you said this is mashrut, this is conditional. It is conditional that the person be alive. It is conditional that the person be present. It be conditional, conditional that the person is able to do so. These were the three conditions you placed. In your turn, I want you to present those conditions from the Quran, from the Sunnah, and from the, mes from, uh, the ijma of the Ummah, but relating to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that verse is such as, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ Verses such as this, فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ Such verses which you are familiar with, that such verses have the qaid, the limitation of the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created ability in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to supplicate for his nation. What is the meaning of istighatha through the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The meaning is that this nation of Islam, this ummah, has a connection with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dunya, in the barzakh, and in the akhirah. The way he alayhi salatu wa supplicated for his nation on earth, he supplicates for them in his grave, and he supplicates for them in the hereafter. The way he helped them with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya, in the barzakh, he also asks forgiveness for them, which is a form of helping. And in the hereafter, he is able to do so because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this ability. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this ability in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is this possible? I ask you again to define shirk. Is shirk muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? If you don't, do not understand the terms, the technical terms of muhal shar'an because they're too ash'ari for you, then in my turn, again, I will explain those terms to you. And let me remind you again. The debate was not whether <coughs> I am following the principles of the asha'ira or not in this debate. Whether I accept Khabr al Ahad, Yufid al Dhan, or Al Qat. This is not the debate. <coughs> the debate is in accordance with the <coughs> sharait that we gave. Can you pass some water, please? The debate is <coughs> whether <coughs> I can prove istighatha through the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> after he has passed away or not. How much time do I have? You've got five minutes, 30 seconds. Sorry. <coughs> so, 
Two questions. I'll repeat the two questions again. <coughs> Is shirk itself muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? Number one. Number two. Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the qudra, ability to create in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ability to help in the way he helped on earth or not? Or is this impossible? Is this mustahil? This, these are two questions which I need answers on. As for the verse, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُ This verse in Surah An-Nisa. Jazakallah. This verse, we believe, in, the, in accordance with the qa'idah that, that you mentioned, the rule that you mentioned, in our previous discussion, what was the rule? الْعِبْرَةُ لِعُمُومِ اللَّفْظِ لَا خُصُوصِ السَّبَبِ لَا بِخُصُوصِ السَّبَبِ Does this qa'idah apply to this verse or not? And is this verse mutlaq am, mutlaq khas? Is it muqayyad? And when you present the taqeed for this verse, you must present the taqeed from Quran, from Sunnah, and from Ijma'. Quran, Sunnah, and Ijma'. With regard to taqseem of shirk and taqseem of tawheed, because a kippers, if you don't taqseem of tawheed, you would end up in effect doing taqseem of shirk also. Because there would be a, a different cancellation of different tawheed, you would automatically commit different types of shirk. This taqseem, you must demonstrate. You must demonstrate that there is ijma' on this and not that you are a muqallid, a blind fellow in creed. Not like Ahmad Rida Khan, Rahimullah being a muqallid of Abu Hanifa, which your vice debater misunderstood. He's a muqallid of Abu Hanifa in Faru', not in Aqeedah. And the same with Ibn Abdin. He's a muqallid of Abu Hanifa in Faru', which Zahid al Kothri, Rahimullah, he states the differences between the four schools are around 20%. You must show you are not a muqallid of Ahmad bin Taymiyyah in the taqseem of Tawheed through istiqra and tatabbu'. Istiqra and tatabbu', which are mantiq terms. I don't know your position on mantiq, whether you believe mantiq is haram or not. But uh, if you, unless you meant istiqra lughatan, not istilahan. Through istiqra and tatabbu', you must demonstrate that the taqseem of tawheed is mujma uh, alayh, and all the scholars of Islam agreed upon this taqseem. They, again, also with ijma' in our discussion, you said that I follow Jamhur, majority, uh, that you do not follow Jamhur, and Jamhur is not Hujjah. So how do you define Ijma'? Do you define Ijma' as a Jamhur position, or do you define Ijma' in accordance with the odd Aqwal, different Aqwal, because there's different statements regarding how we even define Ijma'? How we even define Ijma', if you check the works of, which you will again use Ashari books, like Al -Amidi's, Ali Al Amidi's book, what is his book? In Usul al Fiqh, Al Ihkam. You will use his work, you will use Al Mustasfa of Al Imam Ghazali, Ash'ari. You will use different works of the Ash'ari. These Ash'ari scholars, if they believed, and I say with a close if, if they believed istighafa is permissible, seeking help from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, does it make them mushrikeen, polytheists? And if not, why? Why are they not polytheists? Why is Al Imam Subki not declared? You said in our discussion that his shirk, which is according to his shirk in Shifa Siqam, is in fact mutawil. This is the term you used. His, his uh, book and his position is mutawil. You would have to define those principles. Why is it mutawil? Why with Subki you have become mutawil, but your muasirin, people in the Ummah today, when they do istighatha, like Al Imam Subki, or follow the position of Al Imam Subki, why are they not muta'awwil? And what do you mean by muta'awwil? Do they fall into shirk, or do they fall into bid'ah, or do they fall into haram? Shirk must be mujma alay, agreed upon by consensus by the entire ummah. If there is shirk, 
is something which every Muslim scholar must agree that this, this action is shirk. You cannot establish ijma' of tawassul and istighafa, istighafa specifically, istighafa specifically through the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa as being a shirk and mujma' alayh through all the different scholars from the Hanabila, from the Shawafi, even if you say they are mutaakhirin, latecomers, you must show it is a mujma' alayh position of a salafu salihun. Now, before my time finishes, Um, it seems to me that Asra Rashid does not want to answer my questions. And my questions clearly were simple to the point. I asked a simple question. I said, why are you carrying all of these books? Because me and Asra, we, I can save him a lot of time of having to even discuss any topics. We don't have to work, open a book. Asra Rashid, according to him, the Asha'ira hold the opinion that the Quran is based upon speculation. The Sunnah is based upon speculation. This is the view of who? Listen, take, these are the ru'us, these are the heads of the Sha'ira, which he has to either denounce or he has to agree with. So Asrar shouldn't use any book from the Qutubs of Umahatu Sita, Bukhari, Muslim, Abi Dawood, Tirmidhi, Majan, Nisa'i. He shouldn't open the Quran because he quoted the ayah. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَابًا رَحِيمًا He wouldn't have to use those verses. You know why? Because for him, or from the Ash'ari creed, is that it's what? These are dhanni. They're all speculation and assumption. <coughs> now, Asrar, please, when your turn comes, put that statement of those imams of the Ash'ariyah, put it somewhere. Explain it to us. What do they mean by it? Why did they say that the Quran is speculation and assumption? That's one thing that we need to find an answer for. It saves us a lot of time. We can all go home and not debate. That's very important, brothers, because we're wasting our time on a basis that doesn't exist. This is something you need to understand. Now, this explains a lot of things for you, which is why he asked the question, uh, is shirk muhal shar'an or aqlan? Which aql are you referring to? Fakhruddin Razi's aql, Bayduri's aql, your aql, my aql, which aql are you referring to? This is very important. It's a very good question. They say to you, aql, whose aql do you want to use? Because Bayduri, Fakhruddin Razi didn't agree. Abu Hamid didn't agree with, didn't agree with Abu Ma'ali al -Jawaini. Every man had his own aql. So when you say shirk aqlan, which aql are you referring to? Inshallah, when it's your turn, prove that to me, bi idhnillahi al kareem You'll have that turn, bi idhnillahi al kareem um, you also mentioned to me, does Allah, does Allah have the ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do istighatha? Um, Adnan Rashid, um, Dili as well, and uh, other brothers, they, they debate with atheists, right? And these are one of the arguments that the atheists put forward. Is God able to do a, create a bigger rock in which he can't carry? It's an argument really in its essence. Is, the question itself is what? Incorrect. My answer, inshallah ta'ala, I'm not going to go around it or not. I'm going to simply answer this question for Asrar Rashid and say to him, Asrar, Allah is able and he chose not to do it. Allah is able to do that and he chose to not give the Prophet sallallahu that ability to help the people in the grave. This is naf'un ghaybi, brothers. We have to understand the issue that we're talking about is, is Allah able to or is he not? Is a point that we need to take home. Can the Prophet sallallahu benefit this ummah? The benefit that we're referring to is what? What benefit are we referring to? Naf'un ghaybi, a benefit that's ghaybi. A benefit that is what? A benefit that is ghaybi, an unseen benefit. Okay. Um, is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ayah that he brought, he brought the ayah, walaw annahum idh zalamu anfusahum. Walaw annahum idh, walaw annahum idh zalamu anfusahum. I'm asking you a simple question. The word idh in the Arabic language, is it used for a past tense or is it used for a future? Uh, no. Very good. In, this, uh, in, in, the, in the context that it's in the ayah, is it a past or is it future? Past or future? Which of the two? Okay. Can you give me the inshallah ta'ala? The... Let's go to the ayah. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذَّلَ مُؤَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ 
لوجد الله تواب الرحيمة. This ayah first of all, the first point that the word if is used here. In the Arabic language, the word if is it is ضرف لما مضى is used for a past tense. Is used for a rather I'm going to go so deep and say inshallah ta'ala atahaddak I dare you to bring me the word used as a future the if used as a future atahaddak from the Quran the word if is always a few, always a past tense something else in the context makes it a present or a future but the word if is always a past some of the grammarians they say the word walaw tara idil mujrimuna fi ghamarati al mawti if you see that the criminals the word if is used here and they said it so it shows the future even that itself is questionable. You know why it's questionable? Because the word tara is what's changed the meaning. Our brother Muhammad Yusuf, Jazahullah khairan. The word atta amrullahi fala tasta'ajilu. Atta, is it past or is it future? Asrar. Atta, is it past or future? I'll answer my own time. No, that was a part of the condition. You can't ask. Okay. Yes or no. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll ask you. Is atta past? I have option to... Time. No, you don't, because we signed the contract. No. Is Atta past? He's not, he's not obliged to answer yes or no, though he's stipulated in the contract which he's signed, which means he can answer it in his 15 minutes. Okay, I, I find that as a hurub, running away from the answer. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. Ma'nawiyan, inshallah. Um, but the word Atta is a past tense. But Allah says to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Atta amrullahi that Atta uh, amrullahi, Allah's affairs has come. Fala testa'ajiru, meaning the day of judgment has come. And atta is a past tense word. The word doesn't change from it being past. The word does not change from it being past, but the meaning that it has is that the day of judgment. The word if is the past tense. And do you know the reason why we're going to establish it as a past tense? Is because this is referring to when the Prophet was alive. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, I want to ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask you guys a simple question. If this ayah is saying to us that we should ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we go to his grave every time. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did the Sahabas not understand it like that? Why did Umar go to Ibn Abbas, the Amr Ramadah, the day of the drought, and say, do dua Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, sorry. Umar radiallahu anhu asked Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib to make dua for him, Amr Ramadah, the year, the year of what? The year of the drought. Why didn't he say the Prophet is there? We can go to him and we can get it from him, alayhi salatu wasalam. That shows us what? The fact that they didn't do it. The fact that they, they didn't do it. Number two. Number two, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this ayah he's using, walaw, walaw idhalamu, whenever they commit a sin, if they don't come to the Prophet to ask for forgiveness, or if they come to the Prophet to ask for forgiveness, then Allah will forgive them. That's what the ayah is saying, right? The Prophet clearly said, Allahumma la taj'al, li, Allahumma la taj'al qabri eidan. Oh Allah, do not make my qabr a place where you people always are coming and they're just always over my grave. Oh Allah, don't make it. The Prophet is seeking refuge from Allah that his grave is not like this. So if every time a brother committed a sin, if he went to the Prophet's grave, then the whole universe will all be going at the Prophet's grave, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they would be asking for the Prophet to ask Allah forgiveness for them. Brothers and sisters, all of those evidences show that the ayah has to be understood how the Sahabas understood it. This is the problem that we're seeing. People who want to come, and they want to comment on the Quran based on their understandings. Misguidance, this is where it occurs. Corruption, this is where it occurs. We have to surrender our understanding to the pious predecessors. And those who follow them in good. And understanding the Quran and the Sunnah, how the Sahabas understood it. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, if anybody wants to hold on to something, hold on to the ones who died, the Sahabas, and how they understood it. And this is where the corruption comes. And you know all these arguments that he's bringing? They're not new to me. Because the books that he's getting it from, I've already got them. I've read them. I've went through them. Subki's arguments. Muhammad, Muhammad Sa'id al mamduh Muhammad Zahid al kothari Hassan Ali Saqaf. Their books are over here for me. Their shubuhat, Ohami Bayt al-Ankabut. Those doubts are weaker than... The spider web. So my brothers, and sis my brothers and sisters are going to be watching it, inshallah ta'ala, is these ayat are not an evidence for, for istighathatu and calling onto the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the grave to, uh, to forgive. And my brothers and sisters, how long do I have? 
I have five minutes. That's good. Baraka. Give me an, uh, my, what I had over here. My brothers and sisters, we have the uh, prophets of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. They're all going through times of hardship. They're going through what? They're all going through times of hardship. Nabiullah Nuh, alayhi salam, he calls on to his Lord. We find Nabiullah Yunus, alayhi salam, in the middle of the Hut. He calls on nobody except Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. We find our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi in the Battle of Badr, in the Battle of Uhud. He, the armies are coming, they're meeting. The better, all of them, إِتَّسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ Crying to Allah, lifting his hands up until Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said the cloth was falling off of him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling him what? Muhammad, a messenger of Allah, don't worry, you're going to get what Allah is promising you for. So the dua was done to Allah alone. Brothers, in simple terms, the debate here is the people on the right are saying, let's only call on to Allah. The people on the left are saying, let's call on to other than Allah. How does that even sound? From the get-go, it doesn't sound correct. I'm saying, I'm saying, Allah alone. I'm saying, Allah alone. Leave him his rights. The Prophet has a right to be followed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has a right to be honored. He's not like us. He's greater than each and every one of us. But that being said, he has no right in ubudiyah. Servitude is not for him. This is the rights of Allah. Don't give it to anyone else. So just please simplify the concept in your mind and understand it. The people on the right are saying to you, Allah alone should be worshipped in servitude. He should be only called on to. And the people on the left are saying to you, no. So should the Prophet be called on to with Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تضروني كما أطرت النصارى عيسى بن مريم. Don't go overboard on me. Just like the Christians went overboard on Nabiullah Isa ibn Maryam. Allah said to the people before, يا يا الذين آم... يا 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 أهل الكتاب لا تقولوا في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله غير الحق. Or the people of the scripture, don't go extreme in your religion. And don't say about Allah تبارك وتعالى which that you have, you have no evidences for. ما المسيح ابن مريم إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل عيسى ابن مريم is nothing except a messenger previously before him other messengers have come where did the Christians go wrong and where did the Jews go wrong الغلو في الأفاضل going extreme on the righteous people this is where it is وقالوا لا تذرون آلهتكم ولا تذرون ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا the five righteous men who Abdullah ibn Mas Abdullah ibn Mas Abdullah ibn Abbas mentions in his kitab uh, sorry, Bukhari brings it in Kitab Sahih al-Bukhari. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. Mu'allakan bi sigat al-jazm lakin. This is all to show you, my brothers, that the argument is from the get-go. It does not go right. It does not make sense. Asrar Rashid. Asrar hadani lahu wa iyyak. May Allah guide you and myself to the straight path. And may Allah keep us steadfast upon that path. Please answer the questions that are directed at you. The question that I asked you, the Asha'ira do not take the Nusus al zahira the apparent evidences, as a proof for themselves. So at this point, you cannot move forward. If not, then I don't see why we're carrying an argument. A person who believes, or a methodology that believes that the apparent evidences are not a proof, except that they show uh, doubt. Inshallah um, ta'ala. And I'll, uh, uh, how many minutes do I have? I have two more minutes, Mahdri. Inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. um, there's points I wrote here. He brought the issue of the shafa'ah of the day of judgment. Shafa'ah of the day of judgment that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is going to do for his ummah. Alayhi salatu wasalam. My brothers, let's go back to my, my three points that I mentioned before. What did I say? Hayyun. Say it with me, brothers. Hayyun hadirun bima yaqdiru alayhi. Alive. He's with you and you're able to do it. The day of judgment, are we with the Prophet in that life? Are we living together that life? We're living that life together. Are we all together? We're all together. Are we asking the Prophet وسلم, something he's able to do? Of course he's able to do it. So he's going to intercede for us because Allah told us he's going to do it for us. He's been given the rights to do intercession. So he will do that for us. We're talking about, and the argument is, you're in this world, and the Prophet ﷺ is in his grave, he's dead, and you're speaking from hayatul dunya to the hayatul barzakh, this is what needs an evidence. And inshallah ta'ala, 
the word Hayyun Hadirun bima yaqdiru alayhi he requested me to bring a proof from the Quran and Sunnah, right? Allah says, وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ شِعَاتِ وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِ فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِعَاتِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ The Nabi Allah, Musa, the man, فَاسْتَغَاثَ Every places that is used in the Quran is referring to حَيٌّ حَاضِرٌ بِمَا يَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِ Nothing else. Every place that it came with is حَيٌّ حَاضِرٌ بِمَا يَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِ That's why we're arguing, where are you guys bringing it from other than these three? The evidence is on your neck, Asra Rashid, to bring us when it's not حَيٌّ حَاضِرٌ بِمَا يَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِ We have our proof for that. فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِعَاتِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى Musa was alive, Musa was with him, and he asked him of that which he was able. Okay. Time is full of barakah. <laughs> Bismillah rahman rahim Just to pick up on the points that were made. <coughs> Firstly, uh, the side point regarding Jilani and Jili. Uh, I think your co-debater, Abu Taymiyyah, goes by the name Jilani. So you should correct him first. Secondly... The second point that was made, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ What is the correct meaning of this verse? That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa shall pass away from this world. If you check the meaning of the word مَيِّتُونَ بِتَشْدِيدِ الْيَا When the word مَيِّتُونَ on this particular form means سَتَمُوتُ That you shall pass away. <coughs> and what is the very definition of mawt? مُفَارَقَةُ الرُّوحِ عَنِ الْجِسْتِ the separation of the soul from the body. And this happens. After this, as the martyrs, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون That do not consider those who have been killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as dead. They are alive and with their Lord they are being sustained. This sustenance and being alive is الحياه البرزخية which we establish also for Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam Al-Anbiya u ahyaun fi quburihim yusallun Yusallun This yusallun will be also consist of istighfar al-Rasul for his ummah The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeking forgiveness for his nation in the grave So at this point you also mentioned going back to Qudratullah that you said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to make his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam benefit or assist from the grave for his nation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has qudra over this. In effect, you have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine power of creating shirk. Because if, if you leave the statement that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is able to help in the grave, as being shirk, then mutlaqan with that qiyud, and these qiyud that you've mentioned, we would say, this is why the question is relevant. Do you consider shirk as being muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? It's related to qudratullah, divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you believe it's muhal aqlan, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create another partner because a partner for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhal aqlan, rationally impossible. لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَفَسَدَتَا If they were in the heavens and the earth, a God other than Allah, the heavens and the earth would be in chaos. This in effect would mean that this is rationally impossible. In the same way, anything you declare as being shirk would be muhal aqlan. I've answered the question for you. But which position do you take? Is it muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? Then... You did say that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has naf'un ghaybiyun. Naf'un ghaybiyun, which is benefit from the unseen. So in our previous discussion, you said that the mayyit la yadurru wa la yanfa' does not harm and does not benefit. But now you've accepted that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does give some benefit. So how have you contradicted your previous rule that you said uh, the demayyit, this uh, rule does not benefit, you're going to add a close to this, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains the dead in a certain way and gives him some kind of benefit, he is able to benefit. This clause you would have to accept, otherwise you take back your statement that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa benefits. And this 
نفع غيبي this benefit from the unseen does this mean that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when he gives some kind of benefit does this mean that he is hadir here no does this mean he is alive here on earth no so you've gone against your own conditions for someone to benefit for the dead to benefit they must be present they must be able to they must be alive on earth those conditions are not met because we believe the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not present here he is buried in al madinatul munawwara in his grave and he prays for his ummah this is the whole meaning of istighatha then you mentioned if, uh, the word if that it only comes for the past tense in the verse walaw annahum idhalamu that this is only for the past tense in effect you've said that this verse is mansukh an abrogation that the verse has been abrogated meaning it was only limited to a time and then it stopped now i'll ask you to use your mind the event of surah an-nisa which is mentioned in the chapter the event in surah an-nisa regarding the hypocrites they didn't go to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to seek forgiveness and ask him to ask allah to ask forgiveness there was an event that took place after this event took place and these verses were revealed was it permissible for they, them to go back to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after this event meaning could they do this throughout the life of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you say yes they could do this until the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away then the verse is not limited to the past it has an application up to the passing away according to up to the passing away according to us until day of judgment and beyond that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam intercedes for his nation in this dunya in the barzakh in the akhirah this intercession continues because he has the life of the prophets he has life in the grave the life of the prophets then i would advise you also that to recheck mughni al-labib where he gives you examples ibn hisham rahimahullah where he gives you examples of the word id coming for future check the mukhtasar of salih al-uthaymin of mughni al-labib i didn't bring it with me but in there you'll also find that he in his uh, ikhtisar which is one good book which he wrote in there is uh, he gives examples like is uh, zalimuna fi ghamrat al-mawt this is an example that when the people who will be uh, the wrongdoers will be in the pangs of death meaning in the future so this point doesn't stand even though salih al-uthaymin makes this same point regarding the verse from which you have done taqlid of you also mentioned regarding ash'ira and the aql and you said which aql the aql of razi the aql of ghazali i'll answer this point i mentioned to you in our discussion that we do not do taqlid of the scholars when it comes to creed we follow the ijma so if there are few views of a certain ash'ira which we do not agree with we cite them as being musamahat the way you excuse al imam subki you said al imam subki is muta'awwil he's interpreted you not you haven't given the reason the same way if there is a scholar who makes a slip in a book the way you would excuse ibn taymiyah for bring believing in fana unnar that the hellfire will come to an end or you'll make a ta'wil for ibn qayyim uh, believing for now or not i am not bringing these side points uh, to you so you should not do the same because then we will go into the books of uh, ahmed bin taymiyah this is why i brought the majmu'atul fatawa you said why have you got these books they're not all ash'ari books there's majmu'atul fatawa of ibn taymiyah here also after this you said if tawassul after the passing away of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was permissible why did sayyiduna umar radiyallahu an do tawassul through sayyiduna abbas i ask you did sayyiduna umar radiyallahu an negate tawassul through sayyiduna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bring me one statement of sayyiduna umar radiyallahu an where he said it is impermissible now sayyiduna umar radiyallahu an was the imam meaning the khalifa the khalifa has the option to have certain people lead the prayer and also to use them as a means to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this question i believe you will not be able to answer in this debate is that our definition of shirk is that anything is shirk is not associated with being alive or dead if the hindus who worship rama if they worshiped rama if he was a real human being when he was on, uh, alive on earth it is shirk when he died it is shirk when he if he's when he is resurrected on the day of judgment and they worship him it is shirk 
Shirk is always shirk. You, you cannot make this distinction because you believe it's possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created within the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to intercede. What do we mean by intercede? In his grave, the dua, the supplication. Then, at, at this point, regarding condition seven, with condition seven, you said, the second debater will begin by presenting his evidence in an attempt to prove... I have to refer back to these conditions, I'm sorry. Prove the istighath of the Prophet ﷺ. There was no limit of alive or dead. You didn't place that. Is it a slip of the mind? You should have placed <coughs> alive or dead. So come on the stage and say istighatha is allowed when the Prophet ﷺ was alive. So it's al allowed when he was alive on earth. It's shirk when he's in barzakh. Say this. It is shirk when it is in barzakh. And in the hereafter, you believe it is alive. So if it's shirk in barzakh, shirk is always shirk. It is not related to life and death. If a person worships someone, he worships them on earth, and the kuffar worship them in the hereafter also. Then you cited the hadith in the Sunan of Abu Dawood, which is, Allahumma la taj'al qabri eidan, O oh Allah, do not make my grave an eid, a celebration. Regarding this, we know that the supplications of the Prophet ﷺ are mustajab. What do we mean by mustajab? They are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made the grave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa a place of worship. For 1400 years, there have been Muslims who do istighatha through the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know for yourself that the likes of Ibn Kathir, have in their tafsir under the verse walaw annahum idhalamu even though I'm not presenting Ibn Kathir as in pr proof as you keep mentioning scholars when we said we agreed not to mention scholars from after the first three centuries of Islam all these scholars if they understood istighatha is through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in his al-hayatul barzakhiya his barzakh life is shirk they would never have promoted shirk in their books they would have taken those accounts out or they would have cited them and said afterwards this is shirk and this amal by ijma consensus of the muslim nation is kufr and disbelief but we find otherwise in their books that they cite it and sometimes they even praise it and some of them as we will see some of them even praise the action then uh, also regarding this allahumma la taj'al qabri eidan regarding this point if it means to visit the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regularly, as you would interpret it, then we observe that the grave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is visited on a regular basis by numerous people. What is the meaning of Eid? Eid only comes twice a year. The Shar'an Eid. Don't go back to the Mawlid debate. To, uh, the Shar'i Eid, the Shar'i Eid, the two Eids only come twice a year. Meaning, oh Allah, do not make people, res and this is ta'wil, which you may disagree with, but scholars have cited this, that do not make my grave such that the nation does not come and give me salam, and they do not recite salam upon me from far. This is the exact meaning, like, لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا I said قبورا بضم القاف قبورا So, after this, the uh, oh Allah, do not, uh, the hadith states, do not make your houses into graves, meaning recite prayer in the houses in the same way, recite salawat and salam upon the Messenger of Allah oh, 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 in abundance. This is the correct meaning of the hadith. It does not mean don't go to the grave of the Messenger of Allah oh, 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 and give him salam, as some people uh, say is impermissible. Then, after this, another point which you mentioned was regarding Hay Hadir and Qudra. Hay Hadir and Qudra. Living, present, and able. These were the conditions you mentioned. You done istimbat from Al Quran Al Kareem. Are you a mujtahid? Are you able to do istimbat? Who done this istimbat? Was this istimbat done by As Salafu Salihun where they said, for someone to do istighatha, the person must be Hay and Hadir and Qadir uh, Ali, if, by the way, we believe the Messenger of Allah sallallahu is hay, haya, al hayatul barzakhiya, and you said he benefits his nation. You have to cl clarify these two points. How does he benefit if he's mayit in the sense that you mean mayit, and you also admit 
that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is alive in his grave. But hadir, this shart, and meaning present physically on earth, which we don't believe in, we believe the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is buried in his grave. How you said, hey, hadir and qadir alay, you done istimbat, you made these conditions yourself, or are you doing naql? Are you copying from the ijma'? Is there ijma' on this? Can you cite the ijma'? Can you show the ijma'? Can you demonstrate the ijma'? Now, the reason why you avoided the condition, uh, the question regarding is shirk muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an, what did you say? You said this is the kind of question atheists ask, can God create another God? I will answer that for you. The, the muhal does not fall under qudra. The muhal does not fall under qudra, meaning the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not relate to impossible things and shirk. Okay, I'll continue this part after. Can I start? Now, um, <clears throat> again, Asrar um, Rashid, Hadani Allahu wa Iyah, may Allah guide him and myself to the Haq. We find that he just sidetracked the statements of Fakhruddin al Razi, Abu, Abu Ali al Juaini, and all of them al Bayjuri, and pushed it, push it, push it aside. And he said it's a Musamaha. I'm now going to turn the tables on him. I'm going to say to him, bring me one person from the Asha'ira, because he said within the Asha'ira, there are an opinion that he's taking and he's leaving off the statements of Fakhruddin al Razi, al Juaini, al Bayjuri, Laqani, uh, Ibrahim al Laqani. What do you call Bakr al Baqillani, Ibn Fawraq? You're leaving these six Imams. All of them said it. If you're going to leave all of them, you need to state for us in your next turn, inshallah ta'ala, who from the Asha'ira said that the Quran and the Sunnah are a hujja, a proof, and it does not go if it goes against the intellect and the khabar al ahad, that the textual evidences. Let me rephrase that question for you again, inshallah ta'ala, so everybody's aware of what I'm asking. That the dhawahir al-nusus, the apparent text, la yufidu dhani, that the apparent text do not benefit our speculation. You need to bring that statement from the asha'ira, that la yufidu dhani, they don't show doubt or speculation. When you're t- I'm asking dhani, if they, I'm saying it's idhafi dhafi ilayh. If uh, When it comes to your turn, you need to bring us from the asha'ira, when it comes, you, look, can, can I, you got your turn. When you turn, you can correct that, inshallah ta'ala. If you feel like what you have is right. When it comes to your turn, from the Asha'ira, you have to bring us who said from the apparent text, the apparent text, the Kitab and the Sunnah, does not show speculation and doubt. I brought Imams that said it from the Asha'ira. You're either headbutting the Asha'ira leaders, because the reason why I'm bringing this point, brothers, is not sidetracking. Rabbu al is not sidetracking. You know why? Because he would not have troubled himself in carrying these books. If they were what? If they were a proof. The reason why he brought these books in the first place is because he's using it as a evidence. A sha'ira don't believe that. They don't believe that. And this is a very important point. So I want Asara Rashid to leave this room denouncing Ash'ariya and say, I've got nothing to do with Ash'ariya. I am a Salafi from today onwards. <laughs> and I take the Kitab and the Sunnah, be fahmi Salafi Salih. Another thing he did was that shows my point is when he came to Shirk, he said, We believe that Shirk is. The question that arises, I said at the beginning, was al awwaluna min al muhajirin wal ansari wal ladina tabaruhum. La taqul qawla laysa laka bihi salaf. Don't say a statement which you don't have a salaf for. This is where the problem is arising from. Asrar's problem is here. He's saying, I, me, and this gives him the statement of a mujtahid. If, if Ahmed Raza Khan is not a mujtahid, then uh, are you implying that you're a mujtahid, that you can actually come and define words? And headbutt the statements of the Aymatul Lugha, what they define as shirk and the likes of it. It's ajeeb, wallah, it's min al bi makan. This is something that amazes me. He said, inna ka mayyitun wa inna mayyitun. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not dead. salatu wasalam. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not dead because of the ayah, inna ka mayyitun wa inna mayyitun. I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions, inshaAllah ta'ala, rhetorical questions. Okay? He said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the word mayyit is mufaraqatu ar-ruh. The soul is leaving the body. Pay attention to this. If the Prophet ﷺ is living this world, if the, he hasn't died and he's not dead, then why is the Prophet ﷺ, ﷺ, why did the Sahabas not consult him in all of their daily day-to-day affairs? Why did they not consult him? And if he was not dead ﷺ, then wasn't his job to convey the message of Islam? When he died, the message stopped. 
then the pro then that would entail that he died alayhi salatu wassalam and he left this world and he's still alive but he's not he's not doing his job because Allah commanded him ya ayyuhar rasul balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik O messenger of Allah convey that which is upon you so the fact that he wasn't conveying shows you that his time has finished al yawma today akmaltu lakum dinakum today i've completed your religion on you meaning it's finished i've gone i'm not able to do that anymore because the reason why he was in this world alayhi salatu wassalam was to convey the religion Another point, if you say that the Prophet sallallahu is not dead, alayhi salatu wasalam is not dead, then that means the Prophet is going to go through three deaths. He's going to go through, this is a very powerful point that you have to realize. The human beings have two deaths. One that we went through when we, when we were born, which is death, death that we went through, no existence. And then when death comes to us, another death. Okay, the Prophet sallallahu is he going to die when the trumpet is blown, if he's still alive? Alayhi salatu wasalam, law nufiqat, indahu nafq sur if the trumpet are blown, is that when he's going to die? Alayhi salatu wasalam. Um, why did the Sahabas? He said that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said Umar did not say that you can't do istighatha. First of all, that question shouldn't be put to me. It's your question. What is tawassul? You haven't defined what tawassul. Has, have you had, has anyone heard him define tawassul? Wasn't that the, one of the... Uh, uh, the most important points pertaining to the debate, which was what he has to define tawassul and istighatha, did he? Until now, we don't know what he, what he considers as tawassul. We don't know what he understands as tawassul. But that being the case, that being the case, he said, did Umar prevent the Sahaba or did he stop them from it? Brothers, pay attention to the context of what Umar did the day of Ram the year of Ramadan when he called on Abdullah ibn Abbas. Pay attention to this. The Sahaba were in a drought where the animals were dying. Humans were dying. Abdullah ibn Umar and at this point where some of his noble companions are going, some of them are dying, would he waste his time in something that's less in degree when he can see the Prophet and he can get it quicker? Alayhi salatu wasalam. He's got the Prophet there. He can go to him. He can get it from the Prophet. And he can sort all of this out. But he chooses not to go. The Sahabas leaving something is because there was no evidence for them to do this. And the ibadah aslan is tawqifiyya. The ibadah is that you can't do it unless you have a what? A evidence for it. So you're saying that you can. You're saying that you can do this action. We want your evidence from you. It's upon your shoulders to provide us that you can go to the people in the grave and ask them. This is your job, not my job. My job is this. My job is that the prophets of Allah, the righteous people, they all ran to Allah. All of them, I'm going to bring you ayat from all the uh, anbiya, al-rusul. Pay attention. Uh, because the time is very short, I won't be able to explain it. But inshallah, if Asrar allows me, when this video is edited, just put the translation of the ayat at the bottom so the people can see it. That's it. Allah says about Nabiullah Hud. قَالَ إِنِّي أُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ وَشْهَدُ أَنِّي بَرِئٌ مِّمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ مِن دُونِي فَكِيدُونِي جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ لَا تُنْذِرُونَ إِنِّي تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّ وَرَبِّكُمْ مَا مِدَابَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاصِيَتِهَا إِنَّ رَبِّي عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Nabi Allah is running to Allah. We find Nabi Allah Ibrahim. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي حُكْمًا وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ وَجْعَلْ لِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ وَجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ وَرَثَةِ جَنَّةِ نَعِيمٍ وَاغْفِرْ لِأَبِي إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الضَّالِينَ وَلَا تُخْزِنِ يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالُ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ We have Nabi Allah uh, uh, Ibrahim again when he took his family to the wadi the valley he ran, he, he called on to Allah he said رَبِّ جْعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُّ وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ We see Nabi Allah Ayyub when the harm touched him. He said, وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرٍ وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَ لِلْعَابِدِينَ وَذَنُّونِ إِذَا هَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ My point is, you're going against all those prophets. من أولهم إلى آخرهم All of them calling on to Allah alone because that was their source of comfort. That was their source of result. That's where they found answers for. Our brother Asrar, هَدَانِ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاهُ May Allah guide him and myself to the haqq. We find he wants to divert from the path of the prophets. Not one prophet, prophets. The battle of Uhud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Badr. Who did he call on to? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Why did he not go to calling on to the other prophets who were out there? Why didn't he use the, uh, the weak narration that you put forward? The weak narration. Al-anbiya ahya'u fi quburim yusallun. 
Why don't you take that? Why didn't they take that argument? That hadith. وَلَوْ سَلَّمْنَا لَكَ جَدَلًا For the sake of argument, even if I accept its authenticity and I take it on board, do you think this is only khas bin anbiya? Is this, had, is this action only specific to the prophets? No, narrations have come approving it for the normal people. Are you going to do istighatha to the people as well, the normal general mass? مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَمُرُّ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ أَخِيهِ The Prophet said that there is not a person who goes by the grave of his brother. فَسَلَّمَ عَلَيْهَا and says to him, أَسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا رَدَّ اللَّهُ رُوحَهُ Except Allah puts his soul in that person. And then he says to him, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ Then why don't you worship the general Muslims then? Because the same is happening for them. Allah is bringing the soul back to them. Why don't you supplicate? Why don't you make dua to them as well? But you know, النَّقِضَانِ لَا يَجْتَمِعَانِ Two opposites do not come together. يُحِلُّونَهُ عَامًا وَيُحَرِّمُونَهُ عَامًا لِيُوَاطِعُ عِدَّةَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ One year they make it halal, one year they make it haram. All of that in accordance to what they wish and want. If the qa'idah is consistent in your mind, and if the principles are something that you need to follow from the get-go, then you would apply it else and everywhere else. We find here, he keeps bringing the issue of al-qudra. I'm asking you, can I ask you a question? The question I'm going to put to you is al-qudra to naw'an. Qudra which is kawniyah and that which is shar'iyah. Which of the definitions are you trying to put the qudra into? Are you trying to put it into the kawniyah one? Or are you try, trying to put it into the shar'iyah one? When your time comes, inshallah, you can explain that, expand that on more. And then we'll take it further from there. بِإِذْنِ bari. If Allah wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You said, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا You said, the ayah, it will mean that necessarily it's abrogated. Then I'll say to you, what about the ayah? وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يَخْرُجُكَ Where are we going to take that ayah? Are we going to say that ayah is abrogated because the word إِذْ is also used in that ayah. It's the same. The إِذْ is used. But that ayah was قَضِيَّةُ عَيْنِ اللَّا عُمُومَ لَهَا This is the qa'ida according to the usuliyin. It's a specific situation that has no generalization. This is the virtue that the Sahaba has preceded us in. So the ayah, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ When the disbelievers were plotting and planning against you, are they plotting and planning against us now that the Prophet is with us? Is that what we're going to say? That the, Prophet, the ayah is referring to us right now with the Prophet present with us? We'll say no. No, it doesn't. This id was specific at that time. Just the, the id, it's the same id. No new different id. The same id. That's in وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ وَإِذْ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ And I said, A'immatu al-Lughah have explained it. He said, Sheikh ibn Uthaymin, alayhi rahmatullah. May Allah have mercy upon him. Yes, he has a muqtasar on, uh, what do you call it, مُغْنِ uh, اللَّبِي بَعِبْنِ هِشَامِ الْأَنصَارِ But I just said it to you. The asal of the word id is always that it's madhi, ظَرْفُ لِلْمَا مَضَى لَكِنْ what makes it istiqbal is a qareena, a in, within the context there's something that diverts it from it. There's something within the context that diverts it from it. So, as sarar take this as an extra benefit. But if you said Sheikh ibn Uthaymin, if I bring you another statement of his, would you take it? Just out of curiosity, inshallah ta'ala. Because I'll bring you he himself in his sharh of Ajrumiyyah, saying that the word is, the asal for it is madhi. And anything else is within the context. I can bring that for you, just in case you might want to take that. Bidhani al kareem. Um, the other thing that I want to bring you to your attention, brothers, is every, every issue has an asal, and there's things that divert it from its asal. The person who is upon the original essence of a matter is never asked the evidence. The person who is upon the asal, al-istishab, ma kan ala ma kan. If somebody has water with them, the asal is that water is pure. Allah said it's pure. The one who says, no, this water of yours is not pure has to bring the evidence. The asal of ibadah is only for Allah. Dua is an ibadah based on the hadith of the Sunnah Tirmidhi. Ad-dua ibadah. Am ad-dua huwa al-ibadah. And the riwayah is da'if which says mukhu al-ibadah. Allah says uh, in ayat al sarih وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ They call on, so dua, ibadah is a dua. You're saying, I'm going to divert her ibadah for other than Allah, and then you're asking me to bring the evidence. Gharib. Dua, pay attention to this question. Dua is what? It's an ibadah. You're asking me to give you evidence that I can't do dua for other than Allah. You're asking me to go around and look for evidence so he can't worship other than Allah. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا أَحَدًا is نَكِرَةٌ فِي سِيَاقِ النَّهِي تُفِيدُ الْعُمُومِ That's the qa'id according to the ulama, which is Do not call on to anyone whatsoever, whoever they are. Generalization. نَكِرَةٌ Indefinite in a context of prohibition shows generalization. That's the qa'id usuliyah. I'm upon the asal, which is that you can never call into anybody until, other than Allah. Based on this ayah, which is am. Based on this ayah, which is general. He has to bring in muqayyidat to unrestrict these general evidences. And I'll tell you, we will sit here forever. They will never bring it. 
They've never done it and they never will. The reason is because the Dalil and the Nusus al Kitabi was Sunnah are clear. Ayat, Wallahi, just over the last couple of days, 80 and odd mujalladat or mu'allafat that I read on just this issue. Every time I'm thinking to myself, how can somebody even make this into an argument? How could this even be an argument in the first place? Again, my brothers, I'm going to reiterate, re 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 is it called? Re yeah, this, this very important point, which is, brothers, on the right side of mine, you're going to find a group of brothers who are saying, only call unto Allah. And on the left, you're going to find brothers who are saying, no, not only Allah, other than Allah. Just listen to the sound of that and how it sounds. Look at your fitras. Even the ones who may even be inclined to the ones on the left can feel uncomfortableness in that, same, that, that statement alone. I ask Allah, hayyan wa mayitan, if we die and if we, whilst we live in this world, that Allah makes us die upon tawheed. La ilaha illallah, la ma'buda bihaqqin illallah, that we worship him alone. In ubudiyya servitude, fi dunya wal akhira, innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi. I conclude that wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aftalu salati ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. With regard to the first point, a sha'ira, because you keep bringing that point up, it does go against our conditions for you to bring this up because we agreed in the conditions that we will stick to certain sources and you won't keep reciting this. And I mentioned to you also that I have with me the books of scholars that you accept wholeheartedly who have also citations which you would disagree with. So your point relating to Asha'ira, I would say, your naql, your transmission of their position is unreliable. Unless you want to take out your time and take their books out and read from their passages and show their actual position. But I will tell the chairman and everyone else here that's digressing from the original subject. Your transmission of me standing here is unreliable. You said right now, if you rewind the videos that, or you made it out to seem that we believe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not die, did not pass away. I have not said such a thing. The Quran states, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall taste that. So if you are not trans transmitting correctly from me here, <coughs> I said to you the Anbiya have al hayatul barzakhiya and the definition of death is mufaraqatul ruhi anil jism. Separation of the soul from the body when they pass away, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a special life in the barzakh. And you can go into the definition of barzakh, what uh, barzakh means. Like the shuhada, if not greater, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا. Do not consider those who have been killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as amwat in the sense that they are amwat like any other amwat. So this also destroys your point that you said, why don't you call on other people? Ya Abdurrahman. I don't need that here, but Ya Abdurrahman. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yuqasu bihi ahad. He cannot be a, a similarity to other human beings in all senses. He's a human being, alayhi salatu wasalam. But, but he's a Nabi. So he, it is different from this. Even a Sheikh Nasiruddin al Albani, who I'm sure, I'm not citing him as a proof. You can dismiss this as well if you want because I'm sticking to the rules. But the hadith, if you check the English edition, Tawassul, its types and its rulings. The, in this uh, book on page 58, which is published by, this actual is published by um, the right street Salafis, uh, Daud Burbanks and uh, Abu Khadija. They have a, on page 58, they mention the prophets are alive and pray in their graves. Uh, Nasruddin Albani cites this as an authentic narration. And he says, on the night when I was taken up through the heavens, I passed by Musa, alayhi salam, and he was standing in prayer in his grave. Subhanallah. Indeed Allah, and also, indeed Allah's angels who travel about in order to convey the greetings of salam of my ummah to me, which you can comment on later. You, you brothers who are checking on the net, you can check the English edition of this Tawassul and Wa'u Wa Ahkamu on page uh, 58. And also check 
the footnote. So this is our position, that they transfer from this world to the next world, and in the next world, in Barzakh, they benefit their nations. How do they benefit their nations? And this you can't call shirk, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the ability to do so. If anyone believes they benefit, they look, if I say this brother benefits me by himself, this is shirk billah, whether he is present, whether he is absent, whether he is alive or dead. With the Prophet ﷺ, when we say istighatha is permissible, you want a definition of tawassul, that was not in the conditions. In the conditions was the definition of istighatha. You wanted a definition of istighatha, and I gave that definition. So here, the Prophets ﷺ benefit their nations because al anbiya ahya'un fi quburihim, they have al hayatul barzakhiyah, which Sheikh Nasruddin and others. Uh, acknowledge. You said regarding Nabuwa. Pardon? Nubuwa. Check that in the Qamus with this Fath al Noon or Dham al Noon. So here, I would like to ask you whether Nubuwa is Aradi or Dhati. Is Nabuwa Aradi or Dhati? Why do I say this? Because you used philosophical terms. He used a philosophical term. He said, Adam Mahad. That's Adam Mahad. Ya Ikhwani. You, can, you have the Sturul Ulama here and other books, uh, uh, Sayyid Sharif and others. Adam Mahad is a philosophical term. Even though Ibn Taymiyyah was influenced by philosophy, and you may have read this term in his works, but Adam Mahad is a philosophical term. So I would ask you, is Nabuwa Aradi or Dhati? Because you said, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an did not go to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And I said, his absence of going, you said, why didn't they go to the grave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa What did I say? I said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in al-hayatul barzakhiyah, when he moves from this world to the next world, there are ahkam, like leading the prayer, which do not apply. This is understood. And what we believe is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa benefits his nation by supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we benefit from this. If someone goes to his grave, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hears their salam and if that person requests, O Messenger of Allah, pray for me in your barzakh. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prays for them in the barzakh. We do not say it's something relating to this. And I repeat again, you did not correct correctly copy from me, you need to apologize from this. Uh, or, uh, or retract your statement regarding that, that you did not copy the principle, my stance correctly. Then you said, is the Qudra, Qudra Naw'iya or Qudra Khalqiya? This is what you said. Which one? I'll give you permission to tell, say. I said the Qudra oh. Kawniya or Qudra Shari'iya. Qudra Shari'iya is same as Muhal, Shar'an, meaning opposite, not the same, opposite. If you say something is muhal shar'an, then you say qudra shar'iya. When you say qudra kawniya, it relates to creation. And that is muhal aqlan. So we go back to the same question. That is it possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create another God? We say Allah's divine power does not relate to impossibilities. In the same, But you said it's possible for Allah to give someone in the grave an ability to do something. You also said the Messenger of Allah وسلم, benefits. You, we, the Quran states, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you as, except as a mercy for the universes. Is he a mercy for us now? Yes, he is. In his al hayatul barzakhiya he is a mercy for us because he, alayhi salatu wasalam, prays for the sinners. He, because the Quran mentions this, which is the verse which is, uh, the verse which we were discussing and you went back to Eid and you said this Eid relates uh, only to a, spe uh, a specific event. If that were the case, I asked you a question. After that event took place, would it be permissible for, because the Hijrah, the verse you recited relates to migration. Yes, the verse relates to migration. The Hijrah took place once. Migration took place once, the verse mentions the migration. But people committed sins throughout the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, different people, whether they be munafiqeen or whether some companions slipped, 
and they went to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the judgment of the Quran remains. That whenever you sin, you go to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and he seeks forgiveness for you. This is the very meaning of tawassul and istighatha. That today if a Muslim is a sinner and he goes and does ziyarah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pray for me in your grave, in your al-hayatul barzakhiyah, that Allah forgives my sins. This is a form of istighatha that is not shirk and you cannot deny it, uh, that it is not shirk. You cannot term this as being shirk and you cannot call those people who do this as mushrikeen, kuffar, even though uh, you have not said that explicitly regarding Ibn Kathir, regarding uh, uh, Imam Subki, and I'm not going to falsely transmit your positions like you have done with me, that you have said I, I denied the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasn't passed away. No, we don't hold that position. The Quran states, innaka mayyitun wa innaw mayyitun. You didn't answer the mayyit point. That the meaning of mayyit is satamut, which does not, it's not dawam, it's not continuous. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tastes, tastes death, kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut, which is separation of soul from body. When he's placed in the grave, he alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the ability to pray. Because a Shaykh Nasruddin al-Bani authenticated the hadith. Again, I'm not presenting his authentication as hujjah because you did say you don't accept. If you want to declare it weak, then you have the books of Asma'ul Rijal. I'm sure you brought the books of Asma'ul Rijal. Did you bring Al-Kashif? Yes or no? You brought Al-Kashif. I have a copy of Al-Kashif. If you, Al-Kashif of Al-Imam al-Dhahabi, which you were unfamiliar of, Muhammad Awama Ashari's edition. If you need Al Kashif, I will borrow Al Kashif to you. I want you to weaken those hadith, the three hadith I mentioned. Let's see you demonstrate the weakening of those hadith because otherwise, you, or you admit Sayyidina Musa Ali Salam stands up, in, uh, uh, you're going to say that was a singular event. If you say that, you need to give dalil. You can't just say it's a singular event. You need dalil from Quran, Sunnah, Ijma. If you say, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the salam is presented. Let me ask you something. When you give salam to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you receive ajar, reward? Don't answer because it goes against the rules. I would answer for you. Yes, you receive ajar, reward. So when you recited salam, does the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reply back to the salam? Yes. So you are benefited from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because his salam is second uh, uh, tranquility. It's a peace for us. So you are benefited from the mayyit. So these examples you are giving of the polytheists in Mecca and people who worship idols and making a similarity between them and the Ash'aris and the Maturidis which make a majority of the Ummah today. I'm not using that as an evidence. I'm just pointing out the fact. No wonder, I'm not saying this about you, Ustad Abdul Rahman, but no wonder people in ISIS are killing people, are destroying graves, are... Uh, calling them mushrik based on this ideology. Not that you are ISIS. I'm not making a low attack. I know you are against them. I'm just saying some of those brothers uh, who have been misguided, the Khawarij, they have taken that ideology where they declare, you have not done tasarru ila takfir. You have not done takfir of us or other Muslims, but I would want to ask you, Ilzaman, why have you not de declared Subki a kafir, uh, Ibn Kathir a kafir, uh, al Dhabi? You know the, what the Habi writes, uh, a kafir, different scholars in throughout the centuries of Islam. The, uh, you said they're muta'awwil. Explain to us why they are muta'awwil. Why have you made ta'wil for them, but you do not make ta'wil for uh, al-Amidi. You do not make ta'wil for al-Ghazali. You do not make ta'wil for um, uh, Ghazali or uh, al-Razi, all these different uh, Ash'ari scholars. With them you have, remember what you said about Mawardi. I will quote later what you said about Mawardi, I'll, I'll quote that, I'll just remind you Shui, Ash'ari Quh, Ahlul Batil, yes? So when you quote Lisan al-Mizan, it's not a hujjah, according to your principles. When you quote Asma or Rijal books, it's not a hujjah. When you quote Al-Isti'ab fi Ma'rifat al-Ashab, it's not a hujjah. Ibn Hajar was Ash'ari, maybe even Ash'ari Quh, check his Fatul al-Bari, he believes in what we believe. Al-Nawwi rahimahullah, Ash'ari Quh, you check his books, he even does istighatha through awliya. Al-Nawawi, which is not the subject, he calls upon men other than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Why do you use his books? Is he Ash'ari Quh or not? So, going back, you said, 
Yanfa'ukum. You quoted the verse which mentions ma la yanfa'ukum. The Quran states ma la yanfa'ukum. That which does not benefit you. But you said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does have naf ghaybi. He has a type of naf. So does he fall under that verse today? If someone calls upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma la yanfa'ukum. Does he fall under ma la yanfa'ukum? Or is he mustathna? An exception from that verse. You have to answer these points. Ustad Abdul Rahman, I'm writing down your questions and attempting to answer. You have not still answered my questions. I asked you, is a partner for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? You did not answer. Then you, you changed the wording to qudra kawniya and qudra shar'iya. These were the two terms you used. And you answered the question you said. You did answer the second question. I give credit where it's due. You said it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the ability to someone who is dead to benefit others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do this. We are saying this is established from what I have mentioned and you cannot negate it from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La yuqasu bihi ahad. You do not make qiyas of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon yourselves. Meaning, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a very special human being. Very special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him khasa'id, so many special qualities. Uh, um, so there are many points that Asra Rashid mentioned. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to respond to them. Um, this is one question that I'm going to put towards Asra Rashid. Asra Rashid is talking about Sheikh al-Albani's authentication. And how Sheikh Al-Bani authenticated. Asra, do you affirm and you agree that the issue of tasheeh and tab'if, authenticating a hadith and weakening a hadith, is a mas'ala to ijtihadiyah, correct? Yes or no? Yes. It is. And ijtihad is furu' al masail It enters fiqh, not aqidah. If the hadith. So, it's, so, so, so okay, uh, okay. It's, so ijtihadat is a fiqh issue, yes or no? Ijtihad is a fiqh issue. No, just say yes or no, then you can explain later. Okay, you don't, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Asrar Rashid mentions that he's a blind follower. He's a, he's a muqallid. And ijtihad is a mas'ala fiqhiyya. Ijtihad is a what? It's a branch of analogy. It's a branch of qiyas. Asrar Rashid is a blind follower. He shouldn't even be talking about issues of ijtihad. That's not his premise. His premise is a scholar said and he has to blind follow. He said, I'm a muqallid. I'm a blind follower. From the get-go, a blind follower is akhdu qawla alimin. You take the statement of a scholar bighayri hujja. I'm a bighayri dalil. Without any evidence. So for you to identify whether Sheikh Al-Bani was right or wrong, then that itself is an incorrect statement. And you wouldn't understand ijtihad because you're a muqallid. You admitted you're a muqallid. I don't classify myself as a muqallid. But he classifies himself a muqallid. He said to me, Sheikh Al-Bani authenticated the hadith. He said, I'm not using it as an evidence. And I'm not trying to push it forward. I mean, that for me, that's what else, what other purpose can it hold, brothers and sisters? Sisters are going to watch it later. What other, what other premises can it hold for you to bring Sheikh Al-Bani's statement and use that as an evidence unless you're trying to prove it? Correct? True or false? Okay. Now I'm going to say to you, I'm not going to use your kashif, but do you have Ibn Adi's Kamil? Yeah. You have Ibn Adi's Kamil. Inshallah, let's look at the, the tarjama of Al-Hassan ibn Qutaybat al-Mada'ini. Al-Hassan ibn Qutaybat al-Mada'in in his tarjama. Ibn Adi weakened the narration. And when I looked at their bow, when I looked at Albani's authentication and Ibn Adi, I was more inclined to the way Ibn Adi went around it. And we don't blind follow our scholars. Whatever they get right, we take. And what they get wrong, we say they get two rewards. They get a reward for it. They get a, a reward for it. Because they're a mujtahid. And their ijtihad is between, in between what? إِذَا اجْتَهَدَ الْمُجْتَهِدُ فَأَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجَرًا وَإِنْ أَخْطَعَ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ Albani is in between two rewards or one reward. He's leaving with reward regardless, whether it's two or one. Alayhi rahmatullahi, may Allah have mercy upon him. This issue, we don't agree with him. Lakin, I'm just going to go down and I'm going to take the tasheeh of Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani. I'll take it for the sake of argument. This was not specific to Nabiullah Musa. And this is not specific. So why did you choose to read At-Tawassul by Shaykh al-Albani? Take his tasheeh, but not look down and follow what he said and how he explained it. That's unfair, isn't that, brothers? You take his tasheeh, you bring it to me and you use it as a proof with me, then why don't you take his faham, his understanding as well? That shows a lot, brothers. Anyways, ala kulli hal, that statement, Sheikh al-Albani explains that there's a hadith narrated by Ibn Hibban in his sahih, min hadith Abi Huraira, that the issue of praying in the grave is not specific to Musa, alayhi salam. 
That's every believer, every mu'min. So uh, uh, Salah has to say, I'm going to do istighath on every Muslim, every mu'min, because this is for every, based on this hadith. When the dead is placed in his grave, ah, he hears the footprints of the last person who leaves. He hears it. If he's a believer, the prayer is with him, right next to his head. He has the prayer with him. وكان الصيام and the fasting عن يمينه وكانت الزكاة عن شماله all his خيرات and all of the good that he's done are all around him and then it's came, came and he's and they come to him all these righteous actions of his they come to him this hadith and also the hadith that I mentioned to you before which you didn't respond to which you're not going to respond to which is ما من أحد يسلم على 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 أخيه there's not a person who gives a salam to his brother except his brother does what he returns the salam to him. So don't, then you, on your premise, where you said, there's naf here. The brother I just said to, assalamu alaikum, who said, wa alaikum assalam. He benefited me. Then why don't you do istighatha to every mu'min and every believer? Because he responded to you, this is a naf according to you. Brothers, these are questions. They're not statements. I'm asking questions. I need answers. Or else we've wasted our time coming here. We've wasted our time discussing this issue. Millions and thousands of people are watching it around the world. They want answers. They want to hear the Ash'ari, the Ash'ari arguments. That's what they want to know. So here I am, inshallah ta'ala, asking you again to respond to those points that I brought. Now let me go back to the issue of, you said the scholars, they cited its permissibility of the issue of al-istighatha. He said they cited its permissibility. Please, that's all we're here for all day. Where did the scholar cite it? Give me one scholar. Say this scholar said that it's permissible. al istighatha and I'm speaking about Qurunul Mufaddala. Not Mufaddala. Qurunul Mufaddala. The three noble generations. Abu Bakr's time, Umar's time, Uthman, Ali. The Sahabas in totality. The Tabi'een. The Tabi'u Tabi'een. All of them. Qarnam ba'da qarn. Generations after generations. This is very important. The other thing I want to say, he said, Allah malatat al qabri eidan. Do you know what eid means in our in Arabic language? Yes. Yes, you do. What does it mean in Arabic language? Oh, you okay? Explain it on your time. This is a question that I've directly put at him, put him at, or I want him to answer. Eid, my brothers, come from. It's the root word of ada yaudu. It's something that has repetition, tikrar. It keeps happening. You keep going to the Prophet's grave. Oh Allah, do not make my grave a place where people keep coming. This is simple terms, my brothers. This is not like Lamiyatul Af'al bi fa'ala lal fi'lu dhu tajridi aw fa'ula yati wa maksura ayy. This is not it. This is not the kalam of Ibn Malik al Rahimullah kalamuna lafdul mufidu kastaki masmul. None of that. It's just simple terms that come on three letter words. You could just look at the dictionary. Brothers, we, we need to prepare. These books shouldn't be like Allah said about the Jews. We need to understand what are in these books. So we don't misguide ourselves and we don't misguide those who are around us. It's very vital and it's important. Again, we find him, he said, uh, the issue of بِفِنَاءِ النَّارِ by Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah. I find this to not want to answer my points. If you want to make a discussion about Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, did he even say the issue of بِفِنَاءِ النَّارِ? We can have a discussion. We have books about it. We've got topics we can talk about it. There's no need for you to go in that area, Asra Rashid. We're talking about istighatha. Wallahi, coming today, I thought all these shubuhat, the shubuhat Subki brought, the Shubuhat Muhammad Sa'id Mamduh brought. Muhammad Zahid al Kothari brought. All of those Shubuhat, you could have brought them today. You could have used those as evidence. I was thinking, this is where I'm thinking he's going to come from. What Shubha is he going to bring? But we're talking about Bifina in Nar. We're talking about other. For me, Wallahi, brothers, it amazes me. Um, at this point, at this particular point, uh, did, I take the, did I take the right paper? Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Now I'm sorry, sorry. How am I in Sani who illa shaitan? Shaitan made me forget it. Now I want you to say, Yeah. Why would you bring the issue of ISIS? And why would you mention it in the context of a debate like this? We're talking very civil. ISIS got nothing to do with us. Mentioning their name is uncalled for, it's unnecessary. It, even if you didn't mean it, it just has that connotation to it. What were you trying to imply? Brothers, wallahi, we should be very careful in those usage. 
You said Ibn Hajar is an Ash'ari. Do you know Ibn Hajar refuted Fakhruddin al-Razi in his Kitab Fatuh al-Bari? Do you know what he said? Ibn Hajar said about Fakhruddin al-Razi, he said he died a death where he perfected his Aqeedah. He said Ibn Hajar died a, uh, Fakhruddin al-Razi died a death. And when he died, Hasun Atiqada, he perfected his Aqeedah. Brothers, are you guys going to say Ibn Hajar is Ash, Ash, Ash'ari, and Nawawi is an Ash'ari, and Bayhaqi are Ash'ari, when they were defending the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Ibn Hajar has the explanation of Fathul Bari, which is As-Sahhu Kitabin Ba'di Kitab Allah. Wa awwalu man alafa fil kutbi. Iraqi, Rahimahullah, he said he's Alfiya. Wa awwalu man sahaha, wa awwalu man alafa fil kutbi Muhammad. La. He said that the oh, first person who ever authenticated or read an authentic book is Muhammad ibn Idris Ismail, Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Mughira ibn Berdizba al-Bukhari rahimahullah. He explained his book. How can you say Ibn Hajar is an Ash'ari when Fakhruddin al-Razi is saying to you the kitab and the sunnah do not show certainty? Sayfuddin al-Amidi, al-Sa'di taftazani, al-Bayjuri, the Quran and the sunnah are speculation and assumption and a man like Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, is defending the Sunnah, spreading the Sunnah. Now, brothers, I'm going to ask Salah this issue. Because, you know, he uses this argument all the time. All the scholars were Ash'ariya, oh Ash'ariya. Where did Ibn Hajar ever say, I'm an Ash'ari? When Ash'ari was spread at his time, where did Nawawi ever say, I'm an Ash'ari? Where did Bayhaqi ever say, I'm an Ash'ari? Where, one place, one time they say, Ana Ash'ariyun. Because you boast and you say, I'm Ash'ari, I'm Ash'ari. Bring me one place Ibn Hajar saying, I'm an Ash'ari. Rather, my brothers, do you guys know that Asha'ira started in the 4th century and the Prophet said that the best generations are who? Khayrun nasi qarni thumma alladheena yalunahum thumma alladheena yalunahum So that shows the disconnection from the Asha'ira. If we take that premises on board, that the Sahabas and the Tabi'in and Tabi'in weren't Asha'ariya and it started in the 3rd generation. Rather, I'm going to finally conclude this point because he keeps bringing this point up even though it's not our mawdu' al-niqash. Even that though it's not, but I have to tackle it because this shubha is being spread into the people to think. I write down all the scholars of the Asha'ira. If another chance is given, I will mention them name by name. They are not more than 21 scholars. كيف تقولون? How can you then say and claim that they're all Asha'ira? This doesn't add up. It doesn't make, it's just too... ولذلك الإمام العز بن عبد السلام who you refer to as an Asha'ari said that the Asha'ira were not the majority. The Asha'ira were not, were not the... He mentions that in his Fatawa al-Kubra, which is also known as Fatawa al-Ahkam. It's also known as Fatawa al-Ahkam. It's also known as, la, Ahkam al-Kubra is known as, and he's also known as al-Ahkam, in which he mentions that the Asha'ir were not the majority at his time. So to argue that they are the majority. And another thing is, brothers, we don't base our religion on majority and minority. The Haq is not the majority. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that, no, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, even though it's not sahih to the Prophet, Antal jama'ah, you are the jama'ah, even if you're alone. You are the haq, even if you're by yourself. Abu Bakr was on the haq by himself the day of Ridda. Umar and uh, Imam Ahmed, the day the Quran was called, when it was said it was created, he was on the haq by himself. And a few who's with him. Allah says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you obey the majority of the people, you are what? You'll be misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ The majority of the people do not. Basing your hukum, because the majority said it, that premise is incorrect. The haq is not looked at who said it and how much it is. وَلِذَلِكَ That's why the scholars, they said, the scholars, they said, الحق ضالة المؤمن That the haq is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he takes it. So, this premise is Asha'ira, Asha'ira, Asha'ira. That needs to be looked to. You mentioned that Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. He said, why don't you do takfir of Ibn... Wait, what do you want? Ha-ha, <laughs> 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 I'm going to come to it. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. Time, because times are very tight. Ah, <laughs> times are very tight. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, what did he say about him? And he threw it in slyly. He said, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, you do takfir of Subki. And why Ibn Kathir? He tried to put Ibn Kathir and Subki on the same methodology on this issue. Ibn Kathir, look at the ayat of what he writ pertaining to the ayat of dua. The tafsir is, here it is, you find it. Look at the ayah, وَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَوْ دِينَا فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَيِّرُكُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ حَتَّى إِذَا كُنْتُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَرَيْنَ بِهِمْ بِرِيحٍ طَيِّبَةٍ Look at those ayat.
Look at those ayat and how he smashes the methodology of calling on to other than Allah. Ibn Kathir is a muwahid calling to Tawheed. Tawheed al-Uluhiyah he was calling to. And he was making sure that shirk would not spread. And Ibn Kathir, by the way, is a student of Ibn, Kath- Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, where he took the Safi, the pure Sunnah, and the pure Tawheed from his teacher, alayhi rahmatullah. And he studied from him and he took knowledge from him directly. May Allah have mercy upon both of them. Amen. This methodology of brothers that are being pushed, that we're not the majority. You guys are the minority, minority. I only quoted in the panel of discussion that day, the, the Asha'ara, the Asha'ara, I kept repeating, because that's all you take. If I said to you, Ibn Taymiyyah said, you will not take it. But I brought Subki for you. I brought Ibn Hajar so I could bring your heart to understand this is something even your own mashayikh and your own ulama would say it. Hadani Allahu, may Allah guide myself and each and every one of you guys to the straight path. May Allah give us the best in this world and the hereafter. May Allah make us the ones who call to the tawheed and the sunnah. Finally, I'm going to conclude again. Brothers, the people on the right here, this is going to be said every moment that comes. The people on the right, brothers, are calling to Allah alone should be worshipped. The people on the left are saying that we should call on to other than Allah. You guys judge for who is right or who is wrong. Wallahu a'lam.